Well, good morning, everybody, and thanks for having me at your summit today. And can I say at the outset, just a congratulations to Ian Martin for taking on the leadership of the Australian Technology Network of Universities. And in the same breath, say a very big thank you and well done to Attila Brunge as well for his leadership um, in terms of over the last little while as well. I'm a big fan of the Australian Technology Network of Universities, um, not just because two of the five are in my home city of Melbourne or my home state of Victoria at least, but um, equally because I think you're amongst the most innovative of all of the universities in terms of what you do and particularly your engagement with industry, um, which is so important and largely what I wanna speak about today. Let me at the start though, just say something briefly about international students because I know with the borders being closed, that has caused disruptions to the sector, um, to universities, to the broader community, um, because we haven't been able to get new international students in. I can't provide any firm guarantees as to when we're going to have large numbers back. I had said a few weeks ago that I'd hoped and increasingly hoped that larger numbers would be back by early next year. It still remains my hope that we'll get there, but I just can't guarantee this, and we're obviously watching this space very carefully. We provided a fair bit of assistance to the university sector last year to help you manage the transition and deal with some of the financial challenges which you are facing because of fewer international students. Um, and we're certainly keeping a close eye on the university finances in that regard. Um, I am, I have been looking at the numbers and I've got to say that I'm quite pleased that the numbers aren't nearly as bad as what we perhaps thought that, that they would be at this stage, but we are keeping a close eye on it and I just do want to acknowledge the situation that you're in. The main um, message that I wanted to, to give today though is around how our universities generally can um, collaborate and work more closely with industry, and I know that's a big focus of this conference. Um, and generally, the Australian Technology Network universities are, are very good at this. There's two ways that this can occur. Um, I'll just briefly touch on the first, but I really want to focus on the second. The first being that it can occur through the courses that we provide and the interaction and the um, the the, the collaboration that you have with industry in terms of the design of the courses, the placements which you have, and the ongoing learning so that when a person um, graduates from your universities, they are fully skilled up to be able to get jobs at the other end. Um, I've certainly been influenced by my discussions with, um, with people like Attila and Ian and others uh, who have been thinking deeply about this and I plan on doing um, some more policy work in this space and working closely with you as to how we will do that. The main goal though of mine, my number one priority and certainly one of the priorities for the government as a whole, is how we can get better research commercialisation. How we can take some of our world leading primary research and move it down the scale and actually get greater um, commercial outcomes at the other end. Because when you look at the data, which I have pretty closely now, you can see that we punch above our weight in terms of research. Uh, the number of publications, the quality of those publications, but we don't punch above our weight in relation to research commercialization. In fact, on most, most metrics, we're far below where we should be. I also look at what the growth has been in research and the output over the last 20 years. You know, 20 years ago, universities collectively produced 23,000 publications from about just under $3 billion of research funding. Today, we spend about $12.5 billion on research funding and produce 100,000 publications per annum. My question though is, have we got the commensurate impact on our society from that massive increase in publications and research investment that we've had? Now, I think that we already have, as I said, 
incredible primary research which we've done. We've got remarkably good practices, examples across the sector of where great research commercialization has occurred. But in aggregate, we can do more and we want to do more and we want to do as well as some of the leading countries do. Because we've got great challenges which we need to solve. We've got great new industries that we want to be creating in the future. And to do that, we need the very best minds put to task. And many of the greatest minds in our country reside in our public universities. And it's not just the commercialization for the sake of commercialization, but of course, when you do that, you get products out to market and you make a massive difference on people's lives. I often think about the example of cochlea, one of our most celebrated examples of research commercialization. That research would not nearly have had the same impact on society, on the world, had it not been commercialized, such that now, from memory, I think it's something like 500 million people have benefited from that research technology and um, assisting with people's hearing. But equally, there's other um, social challenges which need to be made as well, uh, which need to be addressed. And some of those social challenges, I think we could benefit from the university sector tackling them more. Now, many of those big social challenges do involve cross-disciplinary teams. And as one university vice chancellor said to me, they don't necessarily involve um, getting published in the world's leading journals, but they're nevertheless critically important. So it's something else that we need to be thinking about and I want to work on with you over the next six to 12 months. But when it comes down to it, this is certainly my number one agenda is how we can get greater research commercialization, how we can overcome the valley of death from the primary research to the full application. And we've got a team which is working on that at the moment. We're listening very closely to what your submissions are to our task force and we want to make a big difference in this space and really shift the dial. So thank you for listening to me today. Um, thank you for all the work which you do um, in teaching students, in your engagement already with industry. Um, thank you for the research which you do and to the university leaders there, thank you for your leadership. Um, we've got a big task ahead of us and I'm looking forward to working closely with you as we go about fulfilling it.